All right, so the best power source for your base in this game is going to be the thermal plant, and it's going to cost five titanium, two magnetite, and one aerial gel to make. Now, a single thermal plant on its own can only provide you with 250 power to your base, you know, like by itself. But if you put more down, obviously you'll be able to get more power in your reserve and whatnot. But, so the thing that puts the thermal plant over the other power sources like the solar panel, the nuclear reactor, and the power reactor, you never have to come back to your thermal plants to have to like recharge them or anything like that, like you would have to do with the bio reactor or the nuclear reactor now you don't have to recharge the solar panels either like you don't have to like like open them up put stuff in there and everything everything because you know they recharge but the thing about the solar panel is they will only generate energy or recharge energy during the daytime and they also only give 75 each which is a lot less than the thermal plant yeah the solar panel is kind of limited so with the thermal plant as long as you put it in a hot area like i have right here you will see it will constantly generate energy for your base for as long as it is placed down, which is really good, really good in the long run for your base because as you're using power, you know, the more power you use for your base, it'll just constantly come back as you use it if you use the thermal plants because the thermal plants never stop generating energy as long as you put them in a good area. Even though the nuclear reactor, it's gonna be a while like in between reactor rods because the reactor rods last a really long time when you put them in the nuclear reactor, but you will still have to recharge them at the end of the day, eventually which you won't have to deal with the thermal plants. And the other thing is these two are a bit limited with how much you can actually put down in your base because you can only put the these reactors in a multi-purpose room or you can put three of them in a large room. So they're kind of limited in the amount you put down. But the thermal plants, you can put down a ton, basically as many as many as you can fit in one little heat zone. And there are multiple heat zones around Sumatra. There's one of the Seychelles, as we see right now. There's one of the bulb zones. There's a bunch in the underwater islands. 10 thermal plants is equal to one nuclear reaction. And I'm pretty sure you can fit what like 10 thermal plants right here if you use some foundations and got a little creative so essentially you can turn your thermal plants into like a replacement for your nuclear reactor but they are always going to be generating energy and you'll never have to recharge them or anything because they always recharge on their own the thermal plants are also not super expensive to make i would say because the nuclear reactor is kind of hefty you know what it comes down to it you gotta put the steel link it advanced wiring kit and lead the bio reactor is a little bit less so but it is you know it generates a little bit less energy but the thermal plant is like a i'd say it's a middle ground because you need gel sacks ruby magnetite and then just titanium because it's not like putting down multiple thermal plants on one heat geyser is going to it's not going to reduce the effects of the other thermal plants so they're all just going to get the same amount of heat and they're going to generate energy constantly for your base which is going to be amazing two biggest downsides with the thermal plants is the fact that you have to put down multiple to get like a pretty good good amount of energy at least you need at least like seven of them to get a good amount of energy for your base i was saying if you're going to be building like a super big base and you're going to be draining energy and whatnot and not only that but you're probably not going to build your base right next to a lava geyser so you'll need to build a bunch of power transmitters from the thermal plants and connect them to your base that's super far away so that's a little bit of a hassle but it is worth it in the end aside from all those benefits the other thing is the fact that it'll give your base more room to put stuff down because on the inside of your base if you use let's say nuclear reactors or bio reactors you'll have to use the you'll have to use the inside of these multi-purpose rooms to actually put your reactors down in because that's the only place they'll fit either that or the large realm but if you have a bunch of thermal plants connecting your base from super far away you know generating power from a far distance you won't actually have to put any power sources in your actual base so you can actually use those rooms for other things like storage uh decoration etc basically anything you want but you know you won't have to sacrifice storage or room in your base for a power source because your power source is going to be far away so i think it's the best power source because it can give you quite literally the most power and it can also do it do that without you having to recharge or anything like that it can actually match the amount of power that the nuclear reactor gives you if not give you more depending on how much you put down and then the last thing is the fact that it'll give you more space and more room to decorate put other things in your base instead of putting things like reactors in your base and whatnot so that'll give you more options more room in your base to put other things down uh, i'm not sure if there's anything i missed if there are any other benefits or downsides that i might have missed feel free to let me know in the comments below but that is all i have for y'all thank you all for watching and i will see you all in the next one peace